This is a recorded training session for the authorized provider SABA training. We're going to go through a PowerPoint demonstration, uh, and then we're going to do a demonstration of the SABA, how to enter a course record. The purpose of this course is to educate authorized providers how to enter course records and how to print certificates with our new learning management system called SABA. A few concepts and terms used throughout this presentation. The first is course record. A course record is an entry that's created when a course has been taught. It's the same thing as a paper course record sheet. An offering is the specific scheduled class of a particular course, for example, a CPR class on Saturday, June 12th at 1. An order is a record that captures payment. One of those options is a purchase order, which can be invoiced or prepaid and needs to be set up ahead of time with the Red Cross. And an organization is the structure under which all Red Cross data is tracked. Authorized providers who work as independent authorized providers are their own organizations. And teachers can be linked with up to nine different organizations. There's a few advantages to this new system. First is the legal documentation of training activity. So rather than having to keep paper sheets, everything is online and available to you at all times. It also provides easier submission of training activity. Rather than having to mail documents in, you can simply enter a couple pages of information online and click Submit. You'll also receive your certificates faster, and you still have the option of having your local Red Cross print certificates for you. When entering a course record, the only information you're going to need are these six different things. The first is the name of the organization, and again, each teacher can be linked with up to nine different organizations. You'll need the class title and the training site, which is the address of where the training took place, on-site or off-site. The name of the instructor is necessary, and you can have more than one instructor per course. Most classes require student first and last names, but some don't, and we'll get to that in a second. And then there's also a spot for any additional comments to put on the course record. If you're a teacher that teaches instructor courses, meaning you're teaching people who will be teaching, the process is a little bit different, and so you need to get hold of customer service to find out that information. The number for customer service is 1-800-337-2338. So some classes require student information, and those would be certification classes. Any class where you're going to be handing your students a certificate with their name on it, such as a first aid class or a CPR class, the required information is first and last names of the students. Email and phone is optional for all the students if you want to keep in touch with them in the future. Uh, no longer do we require addresses or anything like that, just the first and last names of the students. Now, if you're teaching a leader class, for example, a Learn to Swim through the WSI program or an HIV AIDS course or something like that, you don't need the first and last names of the students. You just need to let us know how many were successfully completed the class how many did not successfully complete the class, and how many were not evaluated. An unsuccessful completion would be somebody who attempted to take the assessment and didn't complete it, and not evaluated would be somebody who did not attempt to take the assessment. After you've entered all this course record information and pushed submit, one of two things will happen. Most likely, your course record will be approved within one business day of the time you submitted it, and then you'll receive an email notification letting you know that the course record has been approved, you can view it, you can print it, and you can also print certificates for the students. Every once in a while, a course record will be rejected. Um, this is usually due to a typo or some information that was given incorrect. You'll also receive an, um, an email notification letting you know if your course was rejected, but you'll also receive a list letting you know what was uh, reject why it was rejected. So it'll tell you the information that you need to fix, and then you can resubmit it. Payment options. Um, a lot of people have questions about how to pay for these course records. There are two options in this system, a credit card and a purchase order. Uh, the credit card option is preferred. It, it um, is like any other online transaction that you would make. You enter your credit card information, it totals it, and you hit click submit and you will see that charge on your credit card statement. Purchase order is an option that you can uh, if you wish to be invoiced, you can prepay and have a purchase order as well. 
uh, so you don't have to worry about entering a credit card each time. Purchase orders do need to be set up in the system prior to starting to enter course record sheets. You can contact our customer service at 1-800-337-2338. Um, and they can set you up with a correct person that will um, get all your information, create that purchase order for you, and then you're able to enter your course record sheets and enter that payment option. Again, you have to have that purchase order set up ahead of time if you wish to be invoiced. These are calculated uh, at the time of your renewal. If you are a brand new authorized provider, you please contact customer service again and they will set you up with a person who will get you your renewal form. All that information can be found at our website at chicagoredcross.org forward slash AP. Again, that's chicagoredcross.org org forward slash AP is an authorized provider. You can click on the renewal form and enter your information there. It will get submitted and someone will contact you and discuss the uh, fee options. If you are renewed AP, our fees for fiscal year 2011, which we are in currently until June 30th, 2011, is uh, usually an $8 per person fee if you're entering your course records yourself or a $10 per person fee if you still submit paper records. There are some annual fees if you're a K-12 through school or you teach Learn to Swim and you can contact our customer service uh, to get details on that. We have a new option for printing your certification. It's an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that has all the components on it as you can see here on the screen. It has the title of the course, the different components, the instructor. It also has the Red Cross logo and the ISET logo. This certificate, if you're printing your shirts yourself, can be printed out with the regular standard computer paper that's in your printer. Uh, it can be printed out in color or in black and white. This is also a good option in case um, your students lose a certificate or something like that. You can print it out again for them with all of the information on it. Wallet card certifications are still available, however, Things are working a little bit differently, so pay attention. As you can see on this certificate right here, there's three different components, an AED, a CPR, and a standard first aid. Should you choose to print wallet cards for your students, this class would have three different cards for each student, one for each component. So if you're ordering card stock, it can be ordered for free through customer service, uh, which is 1-800-337-2338. It can be ordered for free, and card stock can also be picked up for free at your local Red Cross facility. However, if you do want it shipped to your facility, there's an $8 shipping fee. So again, you have two print options for your certificate. You can do an 8.5 by 11 per student with all the components on it, or you can do a wallet card per component per student by ordering free card stock and having that, um, picking that up for free, or having it delivered for an $8 charge. Um, the nice thing about the certificates with this new system, if somebody were to lose something, uh, you can easily reprint a certification from your own computer at home at any point by accessing this course record. Should you need to access the course record that you've already entered, uh, there's a few different ways you can do that. The first and the easiest way is by using this sheet number. A sheet number isn't something you create. It's generated by the computer once you start entering your course record. Uh, generally, it's about a five or six digit number that corresponds to the exact course record that you're entering. So the status function, there's four different statuses that um, a course record can be in, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. The creation date is the day that you created the course record. The course is the title. End date is the last day of the course. And then organization is the organization for which you taught this course. Search configuration just means using advanced search options, and we'll go over that in the demonstration. If you do not target your search, all of the courses for which you are the contact will appear, which isn't really a lot at first, uh, but once you start entering more, it can be quite a few. And also that really tends to slow up your search. So the best way to do it would be to enter the sheet number and the status of the sheet, as much information as you can. I mentioned there were four different statuses for course records. The first is draft status. Uh, while, a, while a course record is in draft status, that means you haven't submitted it yet, but you're still working on it. So you can view your course record, you can edit it, and you can delete it. This is the only time that you can edit and delete a course record uh, before it's been submitted to us. It's a very good rule of thumb to take a few extra minutes while you're entering your course record and make sure all the details are correct, all the student names, uh, make sure you have the correct course title with all of the components uh, that were part of your class. And just making sure that all of that is correct information before you hit submit. Because once you press submit, the course record goes to us. You can no longer edit it, and you can no longer delete it. 
Uh, you can view it and print it in summary or in full. Um, should you notice after you click Submit that there's been an error to your course record, you need to contact your local Red Cross immediately to have them uh, reject that course record and send it back so that you can make corrections on it. Once we've approved a course record, that means that you can view and print in summary or in full, and you can also print certificates for its learners. Again, once a course record has been approved, you will receive an email notification letting you know that uh, the certificates are ready to be approved, I mean printed. It takes about one business day after you submit for a course record to be approved, and uh, certificates cannot be printed until that time. So you can't print certificates immediately after entering. You do have to wait until it's been approved. If you do wish to have certificates printed on the same day, you can always contact us if during business hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., at our customer service member and ask them to approve it immediately so you can print certs if that is your case. The last status is rejected for a course record. If your course record has been rejected, you can still view and print in summary or in full, but you can also edit it and you can delete it. A few things to remember from this training, that you can't make changes to your course record once it's submitted, so that's really something you want to make sure all of the information is correct uh, before you enter it. As Erica said, setting up a payment method, you can either use credit card or purchase order. Uh, credit card is something you can do on your own by entering your credit card information. Purchase order is something you do need to set up with the Red Cross uh, by contacting customer service. Before you can enter your course records, you have to have your purchase order set up, otherwise it won't let you submit them. And then also for printing certificates, you can do an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper for each student with all of the components on it per class, or you can do wallet cards per component per student. And you can get free cards back by contacting customer service. There is an assessment that you can take since you've sat through this training. Uh, the assessment consists of 15 multiple choice questions. You do have to answer all of the questions, and you have to score an 80% or higher to pass. Um, the good news is you can take the assessment as many times as you want to pass, and it's not a required assessment, but it will show up on your transcript, and it will qualify your SABA training. After this training, uh, if you wish to start entering course records, please contact us to ensure that you are linked to the correct organizations and that you are marked uh, to be able to enter under that organization. There is some setup that is required before you start entering course records. And you can do that setup by contacting uh, customer service here at this number or at this email address, but chicagocs at usa.redcross.org. Again, that's 1-800-377-2338 or Chicago CS, C H I C A G O C S, at usa.redcross.org. Now we're going to do a demonstration in the SABA system. You can get there by going to this web address, https colon backslash backslash, notice there's no www, classes.redcross.org. Go to the retu returning users portal. Your username will be your email address in its entirety. If this is your first time entering SABA, your, user your password will be welcome1 with a capital W followed by the number 1. Otherwise, you might have created your own already. In some instances, your username will be your old LMS instructor ID number. But if you are unsure, if you are unable to log in, please contact customer service and we'll find out which use your name you are logged in under. This is the home screen you're going to see when you first log in to um, the SABA system. For entering course records, you're going to want to come up to this drop-down menu underneath your name in the top right corner. It should say Home and CR Administration. If it doesn't have an option or if there is no drop-down menu, you need to notify us and let us know so that we can give you uh, the correct access to the course record administration. So once you have that drop down, then you go to see our administration, which is course record administration, and click on it. Wait for the page to reload. I mentioned before there was a few different ways you could search for a course sheet. Uh, this is how you can do that. Here's that sheet number field, and here's the status field. But if you're entering a new course record, you're going to want to come down here to the new course record link, 
click on it and wait for the page to reload. The person entering the course record is automatically listed as the contact. And remember, the person who is the contact is the one that receives email notifications and has access to this course record in the future. When you're entering um, a course record, come to Organization and click on the drop-down. We should have a list of all the organizations that you're linked to. If any of them are missing, you need to contact us and let us know so that we can link you to one of the organizations uh, that you're not on. For offering information, you're going to want to enter the course title by going over here to the Pick Course icon. Since the system is a bit sensitive when entering information, the easiest way to find a course is to type the percent sign and then any part of the course title, followed by the percent sign. If you don't specify your search very much, it'll probably pull up a lot of information. For example, typing in CPR with the percent sign pulls up over five pages of information. If you know a little bit more of the specified uh, title of your course, you can type that in. If you're having a hard time finding it, just broaden your search until you find what you're looking for. Here's the course title, and this is the course ID. Once you find the course title that you're looking for, click this box on the left. It will automatically populate into the course title field. Please be very sure that you choose the correct course with all the components that you teach. If you do pay a per person fee and you miss a component or a course that does not have the component you're teaching, you will have to enter another course record sheet. You may be billed for another fee per person. So make sure you select a course that has every component in it. A uh, few notes, if you do a search, um, a wider search, you can find some new courses that have been added that have some of the add-on courses as components in that course. For instance, the HSSFA416 course has all of the lay responder course components in it, standard first aid, CPR, AED for adult and child, and CPR infants in it, as well as bloodborne pathogens, EpiPen, asthma inhaler, and oxygen. So you can always choose that course, and if there are some of the components in that that you do not teach, you can mark them not evaluated. We'll show you that in just a moment. Yep. Here's that course. We'll go ahead and click on that. And we'll give you an example on the next page. Once your page refreshes, you can come down and under Offering End Date, type the last day of class. Make sure you type it in this format. If you're having difficulty, you can click on the calendar and choose the date from there. 200 students can be linked for each course record, um, up to 200. But keep in mind that you will have to enter student information for all of them. So for today, we're just going to do two. But each course record can contain up to 200 students. The training site address is the address where you conducted the training. And be sure to put your county in. A little trick when doing the county, if you click on the drop down menu, hold your mouse over it and type the letters IL, it'll quickly go to Illinois, starting alphabetically, and you can choose your county from there. Down at the bottom under other information, you have two boxes here. Under certificates, if you do need certificates for your students, you want to click certificates will be printed by customer. If you don't need certificates, you can choose that option as well. But most often, you'll probably want to print your own certificates. And under the comments box, it's important that you make sure you put the instructor's name, because if you print a summary of this sheet, the instructor will not show up unless their name is in this box. Once you've entered all that information on the first page, you can click Save. The next page that shows up looks a lot like the first, 
But as you'll notice, it has this course record sheet number at the top. Now would be a good time to keep track of that sheet number in case you need to come back and look at this sheet to make any modifications or to print certificates in the future. If you scroll down about halfway through the page, you'll see that there is a new box called Instructors. Click the Add Instructor link on the right. This is where you can link up instructors for the course. Uh, if you and two other instructors from your organization taught this class, you can put all of them here electronically. The easiest way to search is by last name and first name rather than by username. If you are searching somebody and you're sure that you're typing their information in right, they're still not showing up, uh, you do need to let us know because that means they're probably not linked to your organization in our system. So any instructors who are not linked to an organization in our system won't show up when you search for them here. Once you find your teacher, you can click the box next to their name and click Select and Close. The page will refresh again, and that instructor will be listed. If you accidentally chose the wrong instructor, you can click this X button. If you need to add additional instructors, you can click this Add Instructor link as many times as you need to to add instructors to this course record. Once you're done, come down to the bottom. You can click Save to save and close, or you can click Next to proceed on. The next page is the student information page. Uh, for those of you that teach leadership classes where you don't have to enter the student details information, which is the first and last name, on the first page you'll see a box that says Skip Student Details. If you click that, it'll ask you just to enter the information that we said earlier, which is the number of students that successfully completed the course, the number that were unsuccessful, and then the number of students that were not evaluated. But for the rest of you who are teaching certification classes, you will have to enter student first and last names. Again, email and phone are optional. And now, with a class that has a lot of different components, you will have to choose for each component whether the student was successful, unsuccessful, or not evaluated. If you choose a course that has more components than you taught, that is okay. It's better to have more components than fewer components. Just mark not evaluated for the components that you did not teach, and you will not be able to print cards for those. So that will satisfy your requirements for the course that you actually taught. If you have two students in your class that have the exact same first and last name, the system won't recommend them as different students, so you do need to find a way to differentiate between the two, maybe by using a middle initial or shortening one to um, a common nickname like Bill for William or something like that. So make note that if you do have two students that do have the exact same first and last name, uh, one of them does need to be modified so that the system can read them as two separate students. If you did not give yourself enough spots for students or maybe you had somebody else join, you can click Add Student right here to add more students. If you accidentally put too many students or somebody dropped out uh, before the class even started, you can delete that blank row. Otherwise, double check the student information, make sure it looks good and the student names are spelled correctly because this is how it's going to show up on their certificate. And if everything looks good, you can click Review. To save as a draft, you can click Save, or if you need to change something, you can click back. This next page is just a review of all the information you've typed in so far. So take a look. If you haven't yet, write down this CRS number along with the given information so you know how to find this course easily. And double check to make sure that you filled out the student names correctly and also the different components. Once this is confirmed, and approved, this means that these students you're certifying have successfully completed all of these components to Red Cross standards and they will receive certificate, uh, certificates for it. So you do want to make sure, again, that you've really chosen the right things for all of them. If everything looks good, you can click Confirm. If you notice any errors, you can click Back. But for now, we're going to click Confirm and move on to the next page. This next page is the last page, and this is the payment detail. Here in the amount per student, most often it will say eight. It'll have the number of students, and it'll give you a total amount that you owe. Again, you can choose one of two options, a purchase order or a credit card. If you were to choose a credit card option, it comes up with a screen like this where you can 
choose what type of card you're using, and then you can enter all the card information. Now, if you want to choose a purchase order, that is something you have to have with us ahead of time. If you don't have a purchase order on file with us, you will receive this um, notification saying that nothing's found, and you have to choose the credit card option. But should you have a purchase order on file with us, you will be able to select it right here. Once you've filled out your payment information, you can click the legal box saying that you agree. This is your electronic signature letting us know that you are in valid and good standing with your instructor certifications and that everything was conducted uh, with Red Cross requirements and standards. If you're ready and everything looks good, you can click Submit. Once you've clicked Submit, you can no longer make changes to this course record. It's then sent to the Red Cross to be approved. After you click Submit, a Print Summary button will show up with a summary of this course record. And if you do want to have a paper summary or uh, a print screen summary for your records, that would be the summary page. Once you've finished and you've submitted everything, you'll receive a notification letting you know that your cards are ready to print. So you're going to go back to that first screen. where you had these six different search options. Mm -hmm. um, you can do status approved. Okay. To print certificates for all of the courses that have been approved, you can just change your status to approved, leave all the other fields blank, and click search. We didn't actually submit or approve ours yet, so if you want to look at the ones that you've got drafted, you can do draft and click search, so you can make any modifications and send those into the Red Cross. Here's the one we just entered for today. And a few other ones that are still in draft status. As you can see, they can still be deleted, and they can also be edited by clicking on the sheet number. If it's already been approved, it will say status approved, and there will be a summary and a print certificates link right here, where you can click the print certificates link and print the certification. Mm -hmm. If you need help with printing your certifications, um, we can send you some more information on that. Get in touch with customer service, and they'll be able to send you that uh, manual with step-by-step -step instructions for how to print using this system. That's everything for today's training. Thank you for participating in the AP Saba training. Um, again, if you need to contact us, you can contact customer service at 1-800-337-2338 or chicagocs at usa.redcross.org. Thank you. Okay. I think we should, oh, well, we should have had a one that we could actually press or something. Yeah. Really? Done. <laughs> because usually I just send that. I'm not just